I say good morning to you, and whether you're worshipping with us here in Port Stewart or you're at home, you are indeed very welcome to this time of worship. And we begin as we read from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world, the world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. And with the thought of ascribing greatness and majesty and splendor to our God, we turn to our opening song this morning, and it's ascribe greatness to our God the Rock. Ascribe greatness.
ascribe greatness to our God the Rock. He's a God of justice. And it's before that God that we now come in prayer. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before your throne. We come to acknowledge who you are. You are indeed the God who is faithful. The God who is worthy of all praise. The creator of the heavens and the earth. So we come to you this morning. We come to speak of our love for you. Our reverence for you. And the awe in which we hold you. Because you are a mighty, majestic God. You ride upon the storms and you rule with equity among the peoples. And Father, we turn to you now and ask that you receive our worship and our praise. Because it comes to you from reverent, reverent and submissive hearts. Accept our thanksgiving as we acknowledge before you our need of forgiveness. Because, Father, we need to acknowledge that while you are mighty and majestic, we are a people who have failed you so often. We have turned and followed the desires of our hearts and forgotten about your commands. So we ask for forgiveness. We ask for grace. And we ask it not because we think we deserve it, but because we know your son died that we might be forgiven. And it's by faith in him that we ask for an assurance of that forgiveness. We ask that you will move by your spirit in our midst and in our lives. Reassure us of sins forgiven. And that when we trust in your son and trust in you, we can have that sure and certain hope of an eternal life in your presence. So move amongst us, Father. Let us know your presence now. As we come to worship, as we bring and have given our offering, Lord, we offer it to you and say, Father, receive the gifts that we bring. Multiply them and use them to your honour and glory. And as we offer our gifts, we offer our lives. Take all and use them to your glory. And Father, we ask now that you will receive our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now this morning I would like to share with you a few thoughts on an Old Testament passage which has been coming up in various ways for me over the past number of weeks and even months. The particular verse that I'm thinking of is one that you will have heard me maybe refer to on occasions and it is one that you will know. A particular verse you will know. I haven't told you about it yet but that will come. The most recent time that this verse came up for me oh, was on Tuesday night past there. It was the pastoral efficiency session of our Methodist conference and it was held on Zoom. And during that session, this verse was actually linked with a book by an American author by the name of Susan Beaumont. And a lot of her work is with churches, has been and is currently with churches, that are going through times of transition and change. The title of her book, which was published in 2019, is this, How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You're Going. Nice uh, introduction, or nice title. But in her book, 
Susan Beaumont begins to speak about what she calls the liminal space. Now, are you all familiar with that term, liminal? Yes? No? No? Well, if you're not familiar with it, join the club. Because when I first read it, I lifted down the dictionary to try to find out what liminal meant. And the particular Oxford dictionary that I was looking up didn't have it in it. So I turned then to Mr. Google and found there that Mr. Google gave you this sort of definition for liminal, relating to a transitional or initial stage of a process. So she worked with churches that had gone into a time of transition. And she actually said that many of the churches that she worked with entered the process not knowing where it would lead them or how it would work out. And how that can be a scary place, especially if you're one or you're people that like to know where things are and like to be in control. And I was just thinking that during this pandemic that we're currently going through, we've all found ourselves in the place of transition and change. Think about the changes that have taken place in the past seven months. More people working from home. Social distancing. The wearing of face coverings. Schools were closed. Businesses were closed. And some of them are closed again and worrying if they'll ever reopen. Some people have actually gone on to short, short time working. And for many others, there is a real possibility that they will be facing unemployment. And yes, our churches were closed for a number of months. What changes have taken place? And the question that keeps on coming up in various forms, there's questions come up like this. When will we ever get back to normal? Or will there be a new normal? Or what will the future look like? And do you know something? We don't have answers to those questions. We don't have the answers. So we are in that place, as so Susan Bowman would say, of a liminal space. We're in that position of trans transition or moving into the initial stages of a process. Facing an unknown, an uncertain future. And I suppose at this point, I'd be as well to introduce you to the passage of scripture and the particular verse, wouldn't I? Go to read it for you now. And reading from the book of Jeremiah, and it's chapter 29, and going to read from verse 1 through to verse 14. Jeremiah 29. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jehoiachin and the Queen Mother, the court officials, and the leaders of Judea and Jerusalem, the skilled workers and the craftsmen had gone into exile from Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to Elisha, son of Shaphan, and to Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judea, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. It said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carry into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, 
Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord, the Almighty, the God of Israel said. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I have carried you into exile. And we thank the Lord for that reading from his word. Amen. And before I begin to speak about it, I'm going to ask you to sit and sing. Now this is uh, a way to call for him, but it has the great Kendrick Whitstone. As God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to he plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill. Treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Take courage now, you fearful saints. The clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. And I will trust the hands that made the star be held. Trust him for his grace Behind the frowning providence He hides a smiling face His purposes will ripen fast Unfolding every hour But may have a bitter taste But sweet will be I will trust the hands that made the starry heavens And I will trust the wounds of Calvary And I will trust and I will not be afraid And I will trust the hands that made the starry heavens And I will trust of Calvary I will trust way 
I would think that all of you will have read or heard a particular verse out of that passage on many occasions. You've probably never even heard it uh, spoken on before, and I have used it uh, in things as very as funerals and weddings where people have requested it. Verse 11, let me read it for you once again. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. When we begin to think about passages like that, we always need to be mindful to set them in the context in which they were originally written and intended. You will know that that was part of a letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent to the people of Judea and Jerusalem who had been carried off by King Nebuchadnezzar into exile in Babylon. This was uh, about 600 years BC, right about that. The people that Jeremiah was writing to had been forcefully removed from their homeland and I'm sure you can imagine they longed to be back in their own land and their own time. But they were forced into a place of change, a place of transition. Now among the people there were some prophets and diviners and what they were doing is they were saying to the people Oh, your stay in Babylon will be short. It won't be long till you're able to return to Jerusalem and Judea. But those prophets and diviners who were among the people were simply listening to what the people wanted and wanted to hear. In other words, they were telling them what they wanted to hear. And isn't that sometimes what we listen to best? What we want to hear? Not what is the truth and not what needs to be said. And like the exiles who were longing to hear that they could go back home, aren't we longing to hear that this pandemic is over? Aren't we? Yeah, and we're longing to hear that a vaccine is there and it's been discovered and everything will go back just to exactly the way it was before coronavirus was ever even heard of. But we're in that liminal space. We're in that space of change. Because in this time, things have changed. We may not know what the future will hold, but there is one thing for certain that we will not just go back to where we were. Because we've all changed. Things have changed around us in this period of time. And Jeremiah was writing to the exiles and saying to them, you've got to face the reality of this. Your future is going to be in Babylon. So you need to settle down here. You need to wait. Would you like to be told you're going to have to wait for 70 years? Because that's what these people were told. When 70 years is complete for Babylon. So settle down. You're in a place you don't necessarily want to be, but you have to settle down here. Make the best of what you have and prepare. I want to bring a couple of other things out of this passage for you and share them with you. And because of a number of them, I'll keep them brief for you. And the first one is found in verse 9. And it's God's word does not lie. Jeremiah wrote that those who were saying to the exiles, your stay will be short. Listen to what he said. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. The people who were telling them that it would be a short, sharp time weren't from the Lord. We did not go back to what it was like before the pandemic. The world has changed. 
the virus has shaken this world to its core. And what we need to be doing in this period of time is earnestly seeking the Lord, seeking His face in prayer, opening our hearts and our minds to discern, to see what it is that He has for us in the future. What future does He hold for us? In the Lord's Prayer, what do we say? Thy will be done, not ours, but yours, Lord. Thy will be done. What is it, Lord, you have for us in this period of time? What is the future? And then the second thing is this. God's timing is perfect. Verse 10. This is what the Lord said. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good purposes. The false prophets were telling the people that the exiles would return to Jerusalem. But the Lord through Jeremiah was saying, 70 years, 70 years. We're in the midst of a four week circuit breaker, aren't we? Are you sure? Will it be four weeks? Or will it be longer? We don't know how long it will last. How long will we have to continue living under the restrictions that are here? But we've got to believe that the Lord's timing is perfect. Look at what the exiles were told to do. Build houses and settle down. They've been forced to go there. Did they want to build houses? Did they want to stay there? No. But the Lord was saying to them, settle down, make plans for the future. Have your sons marry, have your daughters marry. Plant gardens and pray for the prosperity of where you are. Because if the place pr prospers, you too will prosper. Settle down. Make a life where you are come through this. So what work can we do in this liminal space? What work can we do now in preparing for what the Lord has when he wants us to move forward under his direction? And how will we know what it is that he wants us to do? Unless we earnestly seek his face and listen to what it is he wants us to do. What is his will for us now? And will we be ready when the time comes to move at his command? Third thing, God's power is sufficient. God's power is sufficient. When 70 years are complete for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. When 70 years are complete, I will move. God will move. God would come and return the exiles to their homeland. They wouldn't do it in their own strength. And not by might, not by power would we say that, but by the power of the Lord's outstretched arm. He will fulfill his good purpose when the time is right, not by might. Remember what happened to the disciples after Jesus' death and resurrection, after they watched him ascend into heaven, were they told to wait? Wait till the power comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And they had to wait. And look at what happened when the Holy Spirit came. They rose from their waiting and they went out into Jerusalem and Judea and to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We need to be ready in this time of waiting to move at the Lord's command. But we don't do it in our own strength. We only do it in the strength of the Lord and His empowering is upon us when the Holy Spirit is poured out and comes and dwells within us. And don't we say that when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, 
who dwells within us by power and strength. The Lord's power is what we need. Not our own physical strength, but the Lord's power. Number four, please. God's plan is good. God's plan is good. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. We don't know who holds the future, or we don't know the future, sure we don't. Tell me, how many of you have made plans in the last seven months and you've had to change them? Yeah? Or maybe you had plans made before it and you've had to change them. But the Lord has made plans. And don't we sing at times, I know who holds the future and he'll guide me with his hand. With him things don't just happen. Everything by him is planned. So what does it come back to again? Knowing his will. Walking with him. And allowing him to direct us. And us being prepared to follow where he leads. Strengthened by him. What's the future? I don't know. But I know one who knows the future. Will we walk with him as we move forward? Point number five. God's plan leads to both hope and the future. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. Any plans we make may never come about. But the Lord promises us a future. A future that has an eternal hope, an eternal future in his presence. And we have a sure and certain hope of that. It's not a wishy-washy hope. I know in one of the recent daily reflections, I think it was maybe Lee was talking about hope and we said, we hope for this, we hope for that. But we have a certain hope of an eternal future through faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came lived as a man among men and died on a cross and rose again and returned to his Father's right hand in glory. And in so doing, opened the way to the kingdom of heaven for all who would believe. Do we have a future? If we believe in our Lord, we have a future. A sure and certain hope of an eternal future in God's presence. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the last one of these. God's love is everlasting. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. It's the Lord. I will come and listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and the places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place which I carry you into exile, from which I carry you into exile. The exiles in Babylon were told that when they sought the Lord with all of their hearts they would find him they would know him and he would gather them and bring them back doesn't the same hold true for us when we seek the Lord with all of our hearts with all of our heart soul mind and strength with all of our being he will be found and he will lead us in to that future that he has planned for us. He will restore us. But what remains for us is what we do in this liminal space, this time of waking, this time of change, this time of transition. Can we use this time 
can we use this space to prepare for the future? And we will only know what the future is when we seek the Lord, earnestly seek the Lord, and open our hearts, our eyes, our minds, and our ears so that we will know what he's saying. We may be in a strange place that we don't want to be in, but the Lord our God knows where he wants us to be. Are we prepared to trust him and to follow where he leads? Let's take time to pray. Father, as we come before your throne of grace, we come, Lord, in the midst of this pandemic with many concerns and worries in our hearts and minds. We will be concerned about our own individual futures, our future together, the future of our families and our friends, and Lord, we do indeed want to know that you are in the midst of this with us and that we can trust you. So we would ask, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you will speak into our hearts and minds and we assure us that you do have a plan for us and that there will be plans to prosper us and not to harm us. So Father, as we go through this time, we pray for an outpouring of your Spirit into hearts and minds, that many will turn and acknowledge you as Lord, acknowledge their need of Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord, and acknowledge that they require, that we require, your empowering to move forward in your will. And Father, we bring before you the leaders of our nation as they make difficult decisions. We just ask, Father, that you will guide and lead them. That, oh, even if their hearts and minds are closed to you, that you will be able to work through them to bring about the best outcome for our nation. And Father, for the ongoing work that has been done to develop a vaccine, we pray that this work will progress in accordance with your will and accordance to the ethics, Lord, that are laid down. And that when a vaccine is discovered, it can be used to establish a means of inoculating people right around the globe. That we will be able to freely move about. We will be able to move without the social distancing. So Father, we pray for your will to be done there. And Father, we are mindful of those businesses that are going into a second round of closure. For those, Lord, who are really struggling and concerned about how they will get through this and about how they maybe manage to get through this time to reopen at some point in the future. We pray for minds and hearts are troubled that you, Lord, will bring peace in the midst of that setting. And we remember those who have indeed contracted this virus, known to us in this community and across the globe. And we hear daily about numbers increasing. So we ask, Father, that you will place your hand of healing love upon them and restore them. 
bring about your healing, Lord. And then, Father, we just ask for our own life to get. Guide, lead, and direct so that all that we do may be in accordance with your will, that we may fulfill your plans so that we might serve you in this time and place. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. And we're going to close by singing a familiar hymn. Maybe not a familiar tune. And it's one that is a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. A charge to keep I have. <coughs> Be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Amen.